saying? Because they, because uh, like right now, obviously, you see there's been a lot of multi-platform games, which is basically all of them <laughs> has been running better on PS4. And according to what developers has been saying, they've been saying the same thing. So I would just love to hear your ex expertise. I want the fans to check it out, see what you, you know, just see what you think between yeah, the two. Yeah, I, I think it's early to tell. Okay. Honestly, I mean, if you look at when 360 came out with PS3, right? Right. And when, when the games really start taking off with those systems, right? You're seeing the same trend now with, with Xbox One and PS4. You know, okay. it's going to take developers a few years to really optimize for the new consoles and the new hardware and really make use of it, you know? And in a, in a game development cycle is two years on average, right? Wow. So the stuff you're seeing that's coming out now, they... They just got their hands on these consoles like midway through their development. Most of these games were developed in the dark. Like they didn't even know what the specs were going to be for the hardware. Mm. So when they finally got out, yeah, it looks great, right? It's an improvement over what used to, you know, what used to be on older gen consoles. But now everybody that's entering the development cycles now over the next two years are basically building it optimized for these systems. And mm. I think from there, then you'll see who the lead dog really is. Mm. Because both of them you know, both of them really can have a significant increase. They're both obviously playing to two different kind of markets and what they're trying to do with their systems. Mm, okay. um, I mean, it's kind of a non-answer, but to me, that like that's what I'm keeping a close eye on, um, on, you know, who's going to have exclusive releases and exclusive titles. Um, but really, it's going to take a little bit of time to really see the advantages on using like technology like ours, but the, you know, the entire gameplay experience making better use of the console. Mmm, that makes a lot. You know what? I'm gonna tell you something like before I go to my next question. But I really love talking to you, Pete. Like seriously, the way you explain things and the way you talk about things is not just the way you articulate it, but you really make everyone from all walks of life really understand, even if they don't follow the technology like how we yeah. do as journalists. But the way you talk about it, it's a certain passion. You know what I'm saying? It's a certain love there that makes everybody get it and understand it and make them want to check it out if they didn't. So, I, yo, I, I see that. I feel that because that's the way I am as a journalist. When I talk, people be like, yo, love them and hate them, I got to listen. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because it's the way it comes off. So, I really appreciate talking to you, man. Like, uh, when, when I come to L.A., we got to hang out with something, man. Seriously, we got to go to Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles. And it's my treat. Like, seriously, man. <laughs> Word up. So, now, my next question is we getting into it right now. So, how much game development time has been saved with using your face wear technology and the lip syncing on the fly? Like, how cost effective is it? How cost effective it is? And how much time is actually saved for a game development um, time process? So, I mean, it varies, right? On how ambitious the game is is right how much okay. content are they trying to produce what did they use before okay you know, that's, okay you know what did they do before and now if they use our technology what where are they saving money um you know you look at like a developer like sony on a title like knack which i saw you yeah. had a very nice review on yeah thank you very uh, much love that uh so a, a title like knack you know they, they can save two hundred thousand dollars using our software just because they they're hold up wait can you say that shit one more time. Wait, hold. You just wait. Whoa, whoa, say that one more time, please, Pete. So you know, if you have, oh if you God. have a team of thirty artists and you can re reduce that to twenty artists, right, and they're able to basically do more with the time they have, you know, time is money. So yeah. right over the development cycle, they can easily save a hundred, two hundred thousand dollars just by integrating oh. our technology. Yo. You <sighs> I know you're making a lot of money, man. I'm proud of you. But like seriously, because that right there, that's genius. I love problem solvers, especially in tech, but in general in the world, period. Problem solvers are like the blessing that God has given all of us in terms of just using our brain to do something. Like, you know what I'm saying? That is amazing. Yo, like, you make me want to make a game, and I can't do that shit. You make me want to make one. Like, seriously, because it's crazy. So, nah, but that's good information to know, man, that you can save that much money and still be just as effective or more effective. That's great. Now, can, now, let me ask you this. Can and will, because already looking at games like Infamous Second Son and Killzone and Rise, I'm already, like, just blown away. But here's a major question. And can in-game graphics rival CG movies now with the tech that you have that's being used in PS4 and Xbox One? Absolutely. You, I mean, you lie? Why are you lying to me, B? Are you serious? You see, yeah, but you got to take a lot of things into consideration, right? The face is one element. 
Okay, you know? that's true. So everything has to look good. This is something that Rockstar are, are, you know, they're always preaching to us, right? If the face looks amazing, but then the tree in the background looks low resolution, it just falls apart. Yes. You know, for it to look really like a photoreal CG movie, yes. everything has to has, be good. Everything has to look real. The environment's got to be good. The, the lighting has to be good. The skin has to be good. I mean, our component, the movement of the face, obviously that's very important. That's where you're telling your story. Yes. But, you know, the cloth, the clothing, the teeth, the tongue, you, you know, whatever articles of clothing they're wearing, you know, any sort of uh, particle effects or anything else, that, everything has to look realistic for you to truly believe that it's reality. And that's obviously what they're doing on the film side of things is, you know, creating, you know, like an avatar style of this full yeah. CG movie where they create this whole world and you just buy into it, you believe it, and you're in it. You know, wow. so it's it. You know, I think it's definitely possible now with with these, you know, the hardware restrictions being a lot less. Yes. But a lot of work is going to have to go into making everything better, and not just faces. So you know, okay. Selfishly, obviously, we, we feel like we can get there because we do a lot of work on the feature film side of things. Oh, okay, but we okay. also know that you know developers have to improve everything they're doing, and that's just going to take time. If there's one company, I know you mean uh, mentioned Rockstar a lot, but if there's one company that you know of, that you would like bet money on, that could pull off in-game CG graphics, not just in character models, but in the overall scene of a game, which company would it be? You gotta look at, at Take Two, right? On the <laughs> side, you gotta look at Blade, you know, and then on Rockstar, on Rockstar, I mean, you look at what they did with Max Payne. I thought Max Payne looked fantastic yes, in terms did. of graphically. Um, but they've also, they've had a trend to invest in those areas graphically, right? They okay. always, you know, the story's always rock solid and real fun to play. The gameplay's yeah. always solid. But, you know, graphics, they, they're they constantly pushing the envelope. I, I keep an eye on those. Um, Crytek in particular. Crytek, they, yeah, they rise. I mean, that wasn't us, but it looks fantastic. Yeah. You know, uh, and Sony. I mean, Sony have... Yeah. They, they, uh, I mean, they have wow. some good backing, so they're, they're obviously going to be investing in the right areas, and now they're, you know... If they can optimize specific to PS4, now they have the new hardware. Um, their facility down in San Diego where they make games is fantastic. We have a great relationship with those guys. Wow. I mean, soup to nuts, they can do everything. And it's wow. from, it's it's awesome. They have a really good, it's their uh, visual arts service group. Yeah, um, yeah, so yeah, yes, yes. It's it, think of it. It's like this hub where they bring in all of this technology and all you know all of this talent down to San Diego, which is you know an amazing place to be, and and it's just this concentrated. So when you have that team that's dedicated on creating visual art, you basically can optimize that over time, right? And the, wow. every every other title that you're going to do is going to be incrementally better oh than the last one. So, so I can imagine what the next God of War would look like with your you technology. Can, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's um, it's exciting. Oh my God! It's like you're about to slip up and say something. Like, you know what I'm saying? Last time we gonna leave it at that. <laughs> Yo, oh man, this is great, man. So now, um, uh, I'm winding down, but I got some powerful questions for you, man, that I really need. So this E3 is gonna be huge, and it's very important because now we've seen what these systems can do, what they're about to do. And we obviously see a gap in terms of sales and things like that. So we get into the nitty gritty now. And a lot of times in business, you know, when it comes to gaming, a lot of times they say, you know, first to 10 million could kind of dictate how things is going to be for the next few years. Uh, do, this E3, who do you think is going to come out overall, like, on top? In terms of the eyes of the journalists and the eyes of the gamers, who you feel... I mean, gamers always win e either way, but in terms of from a competitive nature between Nintendo, Microsoft, and Sony, who, who do you think is going to come out on top with the most impressive games and game lineup and showing overall for their brands? 